The rains would come every afternoon. They were welcome. We were anchored in Lake Gatun in Panama. I was working as an ordinary seaman on the motor vessel Lionheart on the 8 to 12 watch. The morning would be spent hot and sticky doing maintenance on the hull and odd jobs that the bosun could find for me to do. Somehow this manual, menial labor almost went unnoticed because I spent the morning on a lake surrounded by unfamiliar and exotic, beautiful and tropical high green hills of jungle. Being anchored on the lion heart was like being in a big bright blue bowl surrounded by jade green hills with the blue and white sky above. It was pretty different. We were waiting for ship traffic to clear ahead of us so we could continue on our way through the Panama Canal. We didn't know how long we would have to wait. The shadows and mist on the hills early in the morning would give way to the changing colors as the sun rose over our anchorage. The air smelled sweet and earthy and the water sparkled and looked delicious. One morning while I was taking a break on the bow from painting and chipping, I noticed in the hills in the distance what appeared to be an orange and brown smoke flowing down off of the hills over the waters towards our ship. What could it be? As it came closer, the colors became brighter and the smoke looked thicker and alive. The smoke coming toward us traveled a few feet off of the water and headed directly toward the ship in a trembling and shimmering and jerky fashion. It was like a dream. As the smoke got closer, I suddenly realized that it was truly alive because it wasn't smoke. It was millions and millions of monarch butterflies on a migration of thousands of miles, traveling over the jungle and now down over the water, a few feet headed straight to our ship. Once the river of butterflies reached our ship, half of them went fluttering toward the bow, and the other half flew toward the stern and continued on their way unimpeded by our giant ship. A few of the butterflies began to fly up over the ship and softly fly around and over my head and then down the other side. I was in a trance. I don't know how long I stood there staring in wonder with my mouth open until I heard a voice yell down to me. I looked up and it was my mate on the bridge and he was yelling at me to capture one of the butterflies. Here I was on the 8 to 12 watch doing maintenance on the good vessel Lionheart and now I was going to get paid to catch butterflies with my hat. I put my brush down, took off my hat and began walking and running and hopping and swooping and jerking and swatting and laughing and smiling at trying to catch a single butterfly on the wing in the midst of its 10,000 mile journey. Eventually I caught one. I held my hands over it inside my hat and walked up to the bridge and showed it to the mate with a big stupid grin on my face. We both looked at it and then let it go on its journey. The colors were more bright and vibrant than I had imagined. One couldn't help but be amazed by the thought that if we had just been anchored a few hundred yards north or south or east or west it's possible the butterflies would never have flown toward us. Was it just a random coincidence we ended up in the path of those millions of butterflies and became part of the journey for those bu butterflies that year? On my timesheet for that day, I had to write down what duties I did so as to get paid later. I was tempted to write down 9.30 to 10 a.m. catching butterflies with my hat. <laughs> My chief mate, who had to sign off on my timesheet, was an elderly, fat, overworked, and very nervous Portuguese man with a bad heart that I kind of liked. I didn't mention the butterflies, but I could have. You know, drudgery happens on ships, but, but nature's always intruding, and sometimes in reality, it, if it's not present, it's just around the corner. Now, that's, that's the great thing about sailing on a ship. You never know what's going to happen. You're surrounded by the natural real world and, and often it would intrude on, on the most mundane and pedestrian, ordinary, simple task and make them become magical. None of us are ever going to get to catch monarch butterflies while sitting in our cubicle. 
We're never going to get to see whales breach out of the corner of our eye while stocking detergent at Walmart. None of us ever gets to see St. Elmo's fire at midnight while walking on a stormy deck or witness the green flash as the sun goes down over a tropical sea or feel like a child at Christmas time just by entering our home port while we're sitting at our office desk filling out a Form 27B-6. stroke Working on a ship is dirty, smelly, cold, hot, and dangerous. It's hard, sweaty, oily, stinky, rusty, wet, painful, deadly, lonely, drunk, angry, sad, and forgotten. But some days, it's glorious. Some days you could touch the sky, and some days it would touch you back. <laughs>